calculus. Let's do some related rates problems. This is the uh, this is the big stuff, the real deal. Uh, let's see, number twenty-five is where we're starting here. Ah, oh, the old conical water tank. Now, if you haven't, for whatever reason, if you haven't looked at the video uh, that has example related rates problems, um, there is an example of a conical tank problem. This is a uh, one of the greatest hits of related rates for sure. Um, so anyway, I'm going to do this one: conical water tank with vertex down has a radius of 10 feet. and it's 24 feet high. So that means that um, R over H is equal to 10 over 24. That's always true. No matter how full it is, that is going to be a similar triangle. So 10 to 24 is always going to be R to H. So that's going to be important. <clears throat> at some point, we need to get down to not having two variables in our volume equation. All right. Uh, if water flows into the tank at a rate of 20 cubic feet per minute, so what is that? That 20 cubic feet per minute. Uh, different ways you can think about that. Maybe it's just obvious to you that this is the rate that the volume, this is a volume over time. Now that is dv dt. You can, I think looking at the units helps much there. Um, how fast is the depth of the water increasing when the water is 16 feet deep? So when the water is 16 feet deep, what is the rate that the depth is changing? And uh, hopefully we can recognize that that's dh dt. All right, so um, my equation from geometry is the volume of a cone, which is one-third the volume of a cylinder. And I'm all interested in heights here, so I don't really want to have that r squared in here. So I'm going to get this equation right here. Let's see, if I divide these by 2, that's 5 twelfths, so r is equal to 5 twelfths h by doing some little bit of algebra there. So before I take my derivative here, if I take the derivative now, both the r and the h are changing, so I'd have to do some uh, product rule there. And I don't really want to do that if I can help it. Not that the product rule is all that terrible, but I think we want to get rid of the r's. So r is equal to 5 twelfths h, that whole thing is squared, times h. All right, so my volume now, 12 squared is 144 times 3 is, what is it, like 432 or something? Uh, 5 squared and then the pi. I'm putting all this out here together because that's all just a number, right? and then uh, h cubed. Okay, so when I take the derivative, the time derivative of this, that's that related rates equation, dv dt is equal to 3 times this. Well, remember that this was 3 times 144, so the 3 is going to cancel and give me 12, uh, 25 over 144 h squared, and then dh dt pops out. This is the number one thing that I have seen that students forget, is that this pops out here. But I mean, at some point, you have to realize that you've made a mistake there, because if you don't put that in, the thing that you're trying to find is dh dt. So if there isn't a dh dt in your equation, then um, that's going to be a tough search for you. Um, okay, so now I just need to plug stuff in. So I've got 20 is my dv dt, 25 pi 144 times h squared dh dt. 
So DHDT is, well, whatever DHDT is, uh, this would probably be a calculator allowed kind of situation. There's a lot of things that could cancel once we get all that simplified. Um, but uh, I don't know, you really want to do that? All right, fine. So if you were going to do as much as you could without a calculator, DHDT is on this side. So we're going to move everything over here. So the 20 stays up. The 144 is going to go up from this side. The 25 pi will now be on the bottom, and so will the 16 times 16. I'm going to write that out twice because I feel some canceling coming on here. So 20 and 25 leaves a 4 and a 5. Uh, and this is 12 times 12. And 12 over 16 is 3 over 4 both times. And then one of those 4s cancels here. So it looks like I've got 9 over 5 pi. And uh, let me see what kind of answer the book. So I did not have this to the right page. What does the book do? Do they leave it like that, or do they get a decimal number? Uh, they have 9 over... Oh, did I cancel out? I lost one. Oh, there's still a 4 here. Sorry. There's a 5, and there's that did not cancel. So this is 20 pi on the bottom. They left it like that. Um, that, of course, if you did that as a decimal number, then um, I agree with you that that's probably a good idea because nobody really cares what 9 over 20 pi is. Um, so that is point one four. What would the units be? Well, dH, that's H is measured in feet. dT, time is measured in minutes. So 0.14 feet per minute. That's how you do one of those conical tank problems. Uh, what are we doing next? 27. Sand pouring from a chute forms conical, another cone. Okay, this time we have a conical pile, so it's pointy side up. Um, and the height is always equal to the diameter. Okay, so the height is equal to the diameter. So let's see, that means the height is equal to 2r, right? or r is equal to h over 2. Okay, um, if the height increases at a constant rate, that means dh dt, that's what they're talking about there, the height increases at a rate of 5 feet per minute, then uh, at what rate is sand pouring from the chute? That's what they're asking for. Um, at what rate is sand pouring from the chute when the pile is 10 feet high? I think it helps to write all that out. All right, so same deal. I've got my volume of cone is 1 3rd pi r squared h. Too many variables, so I'm going to substitute out the r because r is equal to h over 2. They told me that. I believed them. B is equal to, so 4 squared, that's going to be 12 on the bottom, so I've got pi over 12 times h cubed, and when I take the derivative of that, dv dt is going to be 1 fourth h squared dh dt. And now I can go ahead and plug stuff in. This one, I'm solving for dv dt, which is already over here by itself. So I got 1 fourth times uh, h is 10. Uh, did I lose a pi? I did. I didn't write the pi down here. Sorry about that. There it is. I found it. Um, 10 squared and then dh dt is 5. So let's see, that's 100 divided by 4 is 25 times 5 is 125 pi. 
and this is a DVDT, so this is a volume that is, uh, let's see, what's my units? Cubic feet per minute. And let's check that in the book. Yep, that's good. All right. Um, what's next? Number 30. Boat's pulled into a dock by means of a rope attached to a pulley. Um, rope is attached to the bow, point 10 feet below the pulley. Uh, so I've got a triangle here. Now this is one of those situations where like some things are changing and some are not. And I don't want to make the mistake of calling something that's constant a variable. So right here, if this is where the pulley is and this is where the boat is, where it's attached to the boat in the water, this height right here of uh, 10 feet, that's not changing. So I'm not going to call that h. I'm just going to label that as 10 feet because it's not a variable. This, uh, what would you want to call that? Um, how about r for rope? If you called it something else, that's fine. That is changing. And the, let's see. The rope is being pulled through the pulley at a rate of 10 feet per minute. So that's dr dt. Now that r is getting shorter, not longer. So it would be easy to make that mistake to miss this negative sign. But I mean, think about this triangle here. The rope is being pulled in. The boat's coming in. The r is getting shorter. It's decreasing. So the derivative must be negative. And, um, Right now, r is equal to 125 feet. But it's a variable. It's changing, right? It's getting shorter. And um, we would like to know, at what rate will the boat be approaching the dock? Well, the, how far is the boat from the dock? That would, We would measure this distance, not this. Um, so uh, this we could call, I don't know, it's a horizontal direction. So I could, suppose I could call that x. feel pretty good about that. All right. What is the equation from geometry that relates these things? Well, it's the Pythagorean theorem. Um, so x squared plus 10 squared is equal to r squared. All right, so I'll take the derivative of this equation. That gives me 2x dx dt. And then derivative of 100, that's just a number. That's 0. That's 2r dr dt. So those twos can cancel out if you like. Um, so what do I have? dx dt, that's the thing that I'm looking for. How fast is the boat approaching the dock? That's the rate at which x is changing. Um, I don't know what x is though, but I can find it here because the Pythagorean theorem, right? I know two sides of this triangle right now, so I just need to find what is the square root of 125 squared minus 10 squared. That's 124.6 feet. So I'm going to drop my twos because they can nicely cancel. 124.6 dx dt is equal to r is 125 and dr dt is negative 20. So dx dt is equal to uh, 125 over 124.6 times negative 20, which is negative 20. That's just right on negative 20, pretty much. Um, and what does the negative sign mean to you? you think about that? Well, it's approaching the dock, so this x uh, is decreasing, and that's why we are getting a negative there. Um, and just going to check. The book has uh, the book's answer. They left it in um, 
radical form, the 500 t over 3 square roots of 69. So let's make sure that we're good there. 3 square roots 69. Yeah, of course. All right. And um, you might notice that this answer that we got came out to be very nearly the same as this. Well, this is one of those real long, skinny triangles where this, the difference between this side and this side um, is pretty negligible. All right. Uh, let me put that under here so I don't poke through my paper. Uh, that was number 30, so here's number 33. A beacon that makes one revolution every 10 seconds is located on a ship anchored four kilometers for, uh, from a straight shoreline. So here's the beacon, and here's the shoreline. So this is a top view. I'm look, looking down, satellite view. Um, and this right here is four kilometers. And that's not changing. So whatever I end up drawing here, this is constant. Um, how fast is the beam moving along the shoreline when it makes an angle of 45? So there's like a, a light here. You can imagine like a, um, it's like it's a lighthouse. And that light is shining, hitting the shore. And this is going around at uh, one revolution every 10 seconds. And they want to know when the beam makes a 45 degree angle with the shoreline right here, when this is 45 degrees, then uh, what, how fast is this moving here, right? Okay, so um, let's call this distance from here to here, let's call that x. What I'm really interested in is how fast is this changing, right? That's, that would tell me how fast this is moving, how fast this x is changing. So um, x is right now, since this is a 45, 45, 90, right now it's 4 kilometers, but it is a variable, and in fact dx dt is the thing that I'm looking for. Um, now the other thing that I know is this angle. I could find this, but I don't know if it's really going to do me much good. Um, so I think that I need to know about this angle right here, or actually here at 45 degrees, this angle here is also 45 degrees, of course, and I know about this, right? I know something here. Now, if I want to do, if I'm feeling some trig functions coming on, I can't be using degrees. I need to be in radian mode. So first thing we need to do is recognize that this right here, this is the rate that an angle is changing at. This is d theta dt. But the units, one revolution, for us, we need that to be in radians. What's one revolution, full revolution? You know what it is. pi, of course. So 2 pi radians, instead of one revolution, 10 seconds. You can reduce that if you want. That's pi over 5 radians per second. And theta, right now, is pi over 4. That also needs to be in radians. OK, so what's the equation from geometry that relates an angle to the side opposite of it. And then the other thing that I know is this distance here. You could find this one and use a different trig function, but I'm going to stick with what we got here. I know this is a constant, so I think this is the opposite and the adjacent side to this angle. So tangent theta is equal to opposite over adjacent. This one is changing, so it's has a variable name. This one, this is just four kilometers. That's not changing, so that's just the number four. 
All right, you could move the 4 to wherever you want. I think I'll just leave it there. That's like the same as 1 fourth x. So here, derivative of tangent is secant squared theta, but the d theta dt pops out. And um, like I said before, the most common mistake I see students make is forgetting to pop this thing out. And for whatever reason, when it's a trig function, it seems even more likely that we forget this. I don't know why that's the case, but it is. So be careful. And this is 1 fourth x. So the derivative of 1 fourth x is just 1 fourth. And then, because it's related rates, dx dt. All right, now, um, what am I trying to solve for here? I'm trying to find dx dt. So dx dt is equal to 4 d theta dt over, and then instead of calling the secant squared on the top of this, I'm going to move that to the bottom because I know my cosines better than my secants. I bet you do too. That was exciting. I hope that didn't make a really, really horrible loud noise for you, but um, it didn't break the iPad, so that's good. So let me continue. I just reached up like this and whacked it because I was so excited about taking the uh, derivative of tangent getting secant squared. So I moved this to the bottom here because I'm going to be able to get an answer more easily. So 4 times d theta dt is pi over 5 and then the cosine of pi over 4 is the square root of 2 over 2 and that squared is 2 over 4, or 1 half. So that's equal to dividing by a fraction, same as multiplying by the reciprocal. So that's 8 pi over 5. And this is dx dt. So what are my units for distance? Kilometers. What are my units for time? Uh, I think it's seconds. So that's pretty fast, but by the time this beam gets out here, that is going to be zipping along that shoreline with this thing going around uh, in 10 seconds. All right, let's just check our answer there, make sure we're good. Yep. Um, all right, number 37. Particle is moving along the curve. And, okay, so this is one where they just give us an equation here. It's moving along this curve, xy cubed over 1 plus y squared is equal to 8 fifths. And um, I'm just going to right now cross multiply here. I don't feel like dealing with any kind of uh, quotient rule. So I just cross multiplied that. That's another version of that relation. Um, assume that the x-coordinate is increasing, dx dt, it's increasing, so that's positive. I'm just going to write that to um, emphasize that I uh, read the increasing, and I know what that means. At the rate of 6 units per second, when the particle is at the point 1, 2. So that means x equals 1 and y equals 2. Um, and they want to know for part A at what rate is the y coordinate changing and B is the particle rising or falling at that instant. And rising or falling would just be the sign of dy dt. If dy dt is positive, that means it's increasing, means it's rising. Likewise, if it's negative, then it's falling. Okay, so um, I got my x and my y and my dx dt, so let's take the related rates derivative of this and see what we see. So I'm going to do a product rule on this and I'm going to call this the first and this the second. Derivative of the first. Derivative of 5x is 5 dx dt. Got to be careful here, right? I'm taking the derivative of that x times the second. I don't get a dy dt here because I'm not taking the derivative of this plus the first times the derivative of the second. 
I just took the derivative of a y. So dy dt pops up. Derivative of 8 is nothing. Derivative of 8y squared is 16y. I took the derivative of something with a y in it. OK? Now I just had, have to plug stuff in and not screw it up. So let's see if I can do that. Uh, 5 times dx dt is 6 times y cubed plus 5 times x times 3y squared. That's sort of arbitrary how I'm doing some of those and leaving some of them like that, sorry. Um, but 3y squared is 12, that's true. Uh, times dy dt is the thing I'm trying to solve for. 16y All right, so um, nearly there. Uh, that's 30 times 8 plus 60 dy dt equals 32 dy dt. So dy dt, it looks like doing a little bit of algebra here. If I subtract that over here, that gives me negative 28 dy dt. So whatever 240 over negative 28. Uh, do we want this in fraction form? I suppose. Let's see. So 4, how about 60, negative 60 over 7. Uh, and we could leave it like that. Yep, that's what they left it in the book. Uh, that's units per second. And is it rising or falling? It is falling because dy dt is negative. Um, 39. The last. Oh, I have to turn the page. A point P is moving along the line whose equation is y equals 2x. I've seen that before. So there's a point P on this line. And um, it's a real helpful trick. I think you've probably done this before somewhere. Um, to call this generic point P on this. If it's on this line, then it has coordinates x, comma, y. I could say y there, but y equals 2x. So any point on this line has to have the form x, comma, 2x. x, y, but y is equal to 2x. So that's a nice way of having a like, generic representation of a point on that line. How fast is the distance between the point P and the point three zero how fast is that distance changing when P is at three six if the X value is decreasing at a rate of 2 units per second. All right. Well, I'm talking about the distance between two points, so I think I need to use uh, the distance formula. But of course, the distance formula is really the Pythagorean theorem. So uh, you could use it in the distance formula form, but that's a little bit more, um, I mean, the, the difference is the distance is equal to, do you recognize, do you know that? You know that, right? That the distance formula is just the Pythagorean theorem, right? I mean it is, because like the x1 minus x2, that's this, the y1 minus y2, that's this, and then the distance is this, it's just the Pythagorean theorem on that little triangle. So you could do your 
x2, however you learned this. And I hope you don't feel like, oh no, I don't know if I have the distance formula memorized. Like, you don't have to have the distance formula memorized. It's the Pythagorean theorem. And I think for us here, for calculus purposes, so we don't have all this crazy, like, chain rule stuff going on, it's probably going to be a lot easier to just do it in its Pythagorean theorem form. In other words, not solved for d. Right? This is going to be easier for us to do it this way. Okay, so uh, what are the points in question? The two points are this point and this one. These are variable, so I have x minus 3 squared plus y is 2, sorry, it's not y, it's 2x. 2x minus 0 squared is equal to the distance between them squared. Okay, so uh, I need to find my related rates equation. Actually, you know what, I'm going to simplify this because I can see there's like terms here. It might be a little easier. So uh, x squared and 4x squared, that's going to be 5x squared. And then here I'm going to have minus 6x plus 9 is equal to d squared. Okay, now I'm going to take the derivative, because x and d are both changing with time. So, related rates equation. Uh, the derivative of 5x squared is 10x. Had an x in it, dx dt. Minus the derivative of minus 6x is minus 6, dx dt. Derivative of 9 is nothing. And then here, 2d uh, d, 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 t, I guess. Not to be confused, the meanings of those two d's. This one is derivative of, and this is the distance. I think we can handle that. Uh, you could divide out a 2 if you want, um, or not. So uh, let's just not. Um, so 10, x right now is 3, dx, dt is negative 2, Minus 6, dx dt is still negative 2. 2 times d, oh, I didn't find that, did I? I need to know, like right when this is, I need to know what this d is. So I actually have to do a little Pythagorean theorem. These are, this is at 3, 0, and this is 3, 6. So let's see. From the origin, this is 3 over, this is 6 up. So I guess that would be the square root of 36 plus 9. That's the square root of 45. Uh, could be simplified. We'll deal with that in a minute. Uh, and then dd, dt, that's what I'm looking for. All right. Let's see if we're going to get the right answer here. So I got negative 60 plus 12. And then divided by 2, the square root of 45, that's 9 times 5, so that's a 3, can come out there. It's equal to d, 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 t. And let's see, that's um, 6 there, so I can reduce here. It's negative 8 over the square root of 5 units per second. That looks like what I'm getting there. And, uh, oh dear. I'm so close to the finish line. And I doinked it. Um, let's see. Where did I go wrong? Uh, hmm. did it a little bit different way in the book. They did, um, they left it with the square root in there. And I 
didn't. So let's see. Did I mess up my Pythagorean theorem here? I don't think I did. This is the point three six, and this is three zero. No, that's the square root of forty five. All right. Hmm. Well. It's always possible that the book made a mistake. There are a few. We never caught this mistake. Me and my past calculus students over the years, uh, we think that we have found um, the mistakes in the book. So this would be a new one. I think they might have made a mistake. X is 3. Hmm. Well, if there is a mistake, I mean, this is how you do this problem, for sure. Um, and I think rather than do what they did, which is they took the derivative of it when it was in this kind of form, um, rather than do that, the uh, I think it's better to have it in this Pythagorean theorem form. I think that's way easier. Um, but we're not getting the same answer. I'll tell you what, if you're satisfied with that, then you can cut this video off and... Uh, it's all good. I'm just going to real quick see if I can get the same answer as what they have in the book and then confirm if in fact they have the wrong answer. So they have this. They have d is equal to the square root of x minus 3 squared plus 2x squared. And they simplified, got the same thing that we did like that, and then they took the derivative. So the derivative of this, if you think of this as being 5x squared minus 6x plus 9 to the 1 half, uh, is 1 half times the 5x squared minus 6x plus 9 to the negative 1 half times the derivative of what's inside. All right, and uh, let's see, a little simplifying here. So 1 half distributed into this makes that 5x minus 3. And then this is, oh, and there's an x. I took the derivative of something with an x in it. So there's a dx dt here. Sorry, I forgot that. Rookie mistake. Uh, and then here, this to the 1 half on the bottom So they did it like that, and um, oh, did I plug, maybe I plugged the wrong, hold on one sec, did I, how fast is the distance, no, distance between P, wait, no, I think I did that right. Um, okay, so let's plug in what we know and see what happens here. So, EDT. The difference with this way is uh, there's no D in here, so I'm going to have to meditate on that, uh, why that makes a difference, if that is what uh, the where my mistake came from. So 5x, x right now is 3, so 15 minus 3 is 12, over the square root of x is 3, so that's 5 times 3 squared is 45 minus, uh, yeah, dang it, this is what they had, minus 2, um, so this is very interesting, um, so that's 6, so they have negative 4 units per second. And that is, in fact, what is in the book as the answer. So I'm not sure why mine went wrong there. But uh, you get the idea, and um, I'll further investigate, and I may or may not ever mention it again. We'll see.